All right, hello and welcome to Backstage with Gig Performer. My name is Brad Pontecorvo. We are here every week at 11.30 uh, Eastern Standard Time to jump into Gig Performer tips. We do interviews. It's always a great time. It is a wonderful uh, meeting place. So go ahead and say hello in the chat right now if you guys are popping in. And if you are here, let us know what you're using as a MIDI controller with Gig Performer. Myself, I'm using a Novation Launch Control XL, um, but there are lots of, my vocals have echo and delay. I can fix this. Hold that one thought. Is that better? Let me know. Pretty sure I was running my vocals two times. Um, so, um, bad echo. I think that should have fixed it, friends. Today, we are talking about controlling Gig Performer um, using um, hardware. Um, how to switch sounds, how to map things, um, just kind of keeping things, uh, yeah, super easy to navigate without having to use your mouse. Um, so how do we do it? What's the process? Um, how do we go through that? But before we get started, a couple of interesting things coming up. So next week, we will have a special guest popping on, Marty Wade, um, who's using Gig Performer with his guitar. Um, and he also does something very interesting where he kind of has a set list free approach and he kind of reads the room to decide what's coming next. So um, he's slowly transitioning over to Gig Performer, and it's actually been very cool to watch his uh, transition. We'll make sure we get his YouTube channel linked in the description um, just so that we can make sure you guys can check him out. But he's going to be coming on next week to show us how he's using Gig Performer with Keytar. Now, in addition to that, for those of you who have been following us for a while, um, we have some interesting, cool, important, exciting forum news. So there is a thread in Gig Performer completely dedicated to how people are using it. Um, we started this not too long ago, um, and we have officially reached 100 threads of Gig Performer in action. So 100 uh, documented people, projects using gig performer to power their live performance and own the stage. I was actually working with somebody recently who said to me, I didn't get it why you say own the stage until I had a show recently where I got it <laughs> um, because he was just in full control of his stuff. So if you haven't checked out the gig performer in action forum, um, go check it out because there are interesting use cases ranging from uh, metal bands to prog rock bands to orchestral music. Um, and our 100th thread is actually featuring piano arc. Um, and if you don't know what that is, uh, I'm not going to spoil it for you. Go check it out. Um, these guys are doing some amazing things with MPE and very cool um, instruments. So uh, do make sure to check those things out. Uh, let's see here. We've got some people writing in. Um, Eric at, at Shamas on the forum, uh, who is a regular contributor, um, uses the Roland A800 Pro and a Blackstar foot switch controller with the band. Um, fantastic controllers. Let's see what else we got going on here. Um, Kawhi ES10, PreSonus Studio 24C audio and MIDI interface. Awesome. Hey, Dan, why do you use a MIDI interface? This is a question I got from somebody the other day, and I don't use one. So I uh, wonder what the pro is to using that for you. All right, friends, um, we are going to jump in to using Gig Performer. So let me pop over here to uh, my other screen. Okay. So Right now, we are inside Gig Performer, and what we are dealing with today is how to change sounds effectively, um, how to control things from your hardware, kind of starting from nothing. So trying to be um, as intentional as possible uh, to not miss any of these kind of key elements. So when you get Gig Performer, at the very beginning, you're going to need to connect it. And so there are some physical things that we have to deal with. And the first one is your laptop. So most laptops on the side are going to have some MIDI, uh, some USB ports. Now, I cannot show you my laptop 
because it's currently plugged in. Um, however, you're going to know that a laptop has a little USB port on the side. And for most people, for most entry-level average users, and to be quite honest, most users in general, one USB port in combination with a USB hub is really sufficient to kind of get you up and running. So I use a hub called a CalDigit hub, um, which looks like this. So this plugs into my computer and it gives me lots of options. It gives me uh, some regular USB hubs here. It gives me some USB-C hubs, um, gives me ethernet. Um, and this is kind of the powerhouse hub that I have used. I used to use an anchor hub and it, it worked really well for me. It just got old. Um, and then I was looking for something that was uh, a little bit beefier, had a little bit more port options. So this goes with me everywhere. Every single show, anytime I'm playing music, the CalDigit uh, USB hub is what I use. Um, and into the CalDigit, actually into these USB hubs here, I plug um, a USB cable which runs to my keyboard. Now, most of the time I use one keyboard um, because the genres of music that I play don't force me to use more than one keyboard. Now you can see over here, I have a very small keyboard um, and this is the Akai MPK Mini. Now the reason I'm showing you this keyboard and not another one is because my regular keyboard is quite large. And so showing you all of that would be prohibitively difficult. But if you check this out here on the side, um, there is this USB hub. Um, and it, it looks like the opposite of the opposite side of this cable. So I am going to plug this in. And what you're going to notice is the other end of this is plugged into my CalDigit. When I plug this in, at the very top of the screen on Gig Performer, it's going to tell you it's plugged in. So here, let's check this out. Okay, did you see that up at the top? It said connected. Um, and this little light turned on. So what that's telling you is that Gig Performer sees this keyboard. Um, so I'm going to go ahead right now, and just so that I'm not making any accidental noise here, I'm going to create an empty rack space. Um, when I hit some keys, nothing happens, but you will notice that right above my fingers on your screen, there is this light up green thing. And this is one of the ways you can see if MIDI is flowing, because you want to be able to, you know, make sure that you've done it right. So one of the ways you can know that you've done it right is by checking here. However, a Geek Performer actually has some other options for checking to make sure that you are plugged in. Um, we have a global MIDI monitor, um, and that is what it sounds like. This is going to just say anything that's coming into Geek Performer will show up here. So if I hit a button, um, you are going to see all of these things. If I turn a knob, it's going to show up here. Um, so you can really verify, yes, indeed, Gig Performer is seeing uh, this controller. So once you have plugged in and you can see that everything is working, now you might want to know what you can do with it. So out of the box, Gig Performer is built on changing sounds using program change messages. Now, I have to admit, program change messages to me um, always felt a little bit outdated. However, in using Gig Performer, what I'm actually realizing is that program change messages can scale really well, especially when you are using other programs to support your Gig Performer use. So if you're using something like Band Helper, um, or you're changing sounds with um, something that is able to send, lots of program changes. Well, you can store a program change message and Gig Performer will automatically jump to any rack space that you need. So program changes are extremely powerful and I needed to be reminded of how powerful they can be. So this is my friendly reminder to you. Don't shy away from program changes. They may make your life much easier. Now, this particular controller has a couple of different modes here, and I'm certain that you can't read it. But uh, on the left here, this is uh, CC mode, but all the way on the right, this is program change. So when I hit this button, all of these uh, pads become program change messages. So as I hit these, you're gonna notice I am able to switch through my rack spaces. Now, I did no mapping to accomplish this. 
This is by default. So if you have a rack space collection of 10 rack spaces and you just make them, they're going to respond automatically to the number in which you create them. Now you can change these. So if you double click, um, you have the ability to change your rack space numbers and what things are responding to. However, um, if you're just creating rack spaces, you're just getting started, you're new to this, just go ahead and put things in the order that you want. And that's a really good place to start. Now, this is uh, kind of making like a bit of a jump here. So I've got to go backwards, right? What is a rack space and why do we use them? So a sound in Gig Performer is a rack space. And we've talked about this before. It's rack spaces are made up of lots of different blocks and each block can represent a different item. So Gig Performer is really good at bringing together various different instruments um, along with uh, you know VSTs from different creators all into one place and combining hardware and combining audio and creating an instrument. Now, this is just a piano sound. So when I'm playing this, all it's doing is saying, okay, MIDI is coming in. It's going to my contact native instruments, piano sound, and I am sending it out here. Now this can get very complicated, but it doesn't have to be. So this is a simple rack space. And down here I have another rack space um, for the song Cecilia and the Satellite, which happens to be one of my son's favorite songs right now. And this one is much more complex. I've got different things happening. I've got a MIDI file player everything running into a mixer, and then eventually this is going out. So rack spaces can be very complex, but they can also be very simple. And you really are able to build exactly what you need. Now, when you have something like this, you may know that like you have to have some control uh, over what's going on inside these things, right? So um, let me here, I'm going to open this up. So this is a pigments patch and there's a lot going on. Now, 99% of this is not relevant to me when I'm playing a song, but maybe 1% of it is relevant to me. So there might be one thing that you want to control um, when you're playing this. And in this case, there actually is for me. I want to be able to control this filter. Um, and I cannot do that by going in here and clicking because it would just be too labor intensive. So what Gig Performer has done as a solve for this is allowed you to create widgets. And widgets let you control um, things on the inside of your VSTs really easily um, using your controller. So we're going to do that in a second. But I do want to point you um, to a resource. If you're brand new to Gig Performer and you've never used it before, we have a getting started gig file in our shared gig and rack space uh, forum. So I'll make sure that's linked in the description. But if you're totally new and you have never seen any of this before and you're going, Brett, you've lost me on widget, don't worry. I'm going to walk you through widgets slowly. But uh, we have a getting started rack space that actually does a great job of teaching you everything you need to know about a gig performer, at least to get started. Um, in one rack space and you can just kind of move through them. So uh, do feel free to check them out. I'm going to pop back over here to this uh, piano plugin though. And we're going to talk about what we can do with it. And we're also going to talk a little bit about variations. I think this is a bit key. So in the wiring view right now, I have my MIDI in block and I have a piano. Now let's say that this piano, which is the grandeur, it's my go-to piano sound. Um, has some parameters that I want to access while I am playing live. Um, I can do that. I can do that pretty easily with Gig Performer. And what I'm going to do is adjust the color. So the way that you would do this inside Gig Performer is to pop over to your panels and enter edit mode. And edit mode is going to give you a list of all of these knobs. And they don't do anything right now, but we're going to drag one on here and we're going to make it do something. So over here on the bottom right, you're going to see an option for plugin. Now, if I click plugin, it's going to give me a list of everything I have in my wiring view. Now, if you have been here for a while and you are uh, maybe a bit of a power gig performer user, 
don't worry, at the end of this stream, I'm actually going to do a tiny bit of GP scripting um, to show you some things that are possible um, with widgets and uh, all of that good stuff. So uh, stick around if you are interested in that. But uh, we're going to kind of track ahead here. So there is a huge list of parameters for contact. Now, we do have this filter here, so you can start typing in what you're looking for. Um, oh, you'll see color comes up. So I can just click this and now it is uh, mapped. So just to show you how this works, um, I'm gonna go ahead and shift click on this. And I'm gonna choose show plugin editor. And that's just a really easy way to open things. Now you'll see when I move this widget, the widget inside uh, moves. And so you can do this with any parameter that has been made accessible by the VST developer. This can get very powerful as we build things out because Gig Performer allows us to make use of something called variations. And what a variation does is a variation stores your widget settings. So if I decide I want a new variation, I'm going to call this uh, dark. Um, I can say this widget must be different for each of these variations. So I'm gonna go ahead and just turn this all the way down. And now you'll notice when I move between these two variations, the widget automatically and instantly changes. So there's kind of two ways you can think about mapping in Gig Performer. And this is, I think, where a lot of people start to get confused. So in Gig Performer, you can map a hardware device to a widget, right? That's one way you can map. We're gonna do that in a second. The other way, if you wanna think about it like this, is you can map a widget to a parameter or to something that kind of controls your sound in a VST. So anything that you wanna control that you're planning to use a hardware controller to control needs to be mapped twice, if you wanna think about it like that way. Once the widget to the parameter and once the parameter to the hardware. So if we pop back over here now, we've done the work of getting, oops, this widget mapped, right? We've created a variation, uh, which I'll show you how to move through those in just a moment here. But now we want to do the, the other part, which is having control while you're playing without using your mouse. So we're going to enter edit mode again and select this widget. And there's a tab down here that says general. So I'm going to click on that. Nope, oh, no, I'm not. I'm going to click on the MIDI tab. So there is a learn button here and learn allows you to set a control. So I'm going to click learn and move a fader. And you'll see now when I move this fader, I have the ability to control that widget, which can be done in real time while I'm playing. If you're wondering where that sound's coming from, it's coming from my other keyboard because I'm using an Omni block. But um, this way you can kind of see my face and I don't pop off the screen. So this is the way that you can really go ahead and start to build this out. So right now I'm using one widget, um, but you can use many widgets. Now, let's say we are trying to grow this a little bit. And perhaps I have several different versions of this um, this rack space. Maybe I have, you know, more variations. Um, you're going to begin to need an option to move through these variations without touching your uh, mouse. And Gig Performer allows you to do that. So if you open up the options menu inside Gig Performer, you're going to see a global MIDI option. And what Global MIDI does is it allows you to have these controls set to control things inside of Gig Performer um, without having to map to a widget. So this is kind of like an invisible widget, for, for lack there of a better term. Um, right here, you'll see previous rack space and next rack space. And at the very top, you'll see next variation or song part or previous variation and song part. So we're going to start down here with this next and previous rack space. Now, like I mentioned, by design, if you have a controller that sends program change messages, you can already instantly access all of these controls just by using your, um, your program change messages. But 
Um, in this case, I'm wanting to kind of move through, through things in a list order. So it's a bit of a different uh, setup here. So I'm going to start by choosing next variation. And this is a cool little shortcut. But if you double click, this learn MIDI for selected item will turn on. Now I am going to use this down button here. So I'm going to hit that one time. Now I'm going to click here. Oops. Got to clear these. Actually, we'll just clear all of them. Okay, so next variation right here, click. Previous variation, click. Okay, now we'll see if this works. So when I hit this top button, it goes up and I hit this bottom button, it goes down. Now, this is not going to move me. Oh, I guess it does. Well, there you go. So this is gonna bring us up and down through our things. And in this case, we can do it in sequential order without having to touch our mouse, which is really what we want. We want to be able to move around without having to touch anything. So this is how you can begin to map things inside of Gig Performer using widgets and a couple of buttons on uh, your controller. Now, there may be times um, where you have a need uh, to control more than one parameter, and that is totally possible. So I wanna walk you through um, how you can do this um, for more than one parameter. Um, then we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, widget scaling and widget grouping, and then I'm gonna show you a little bit of GP script. Feel free if at any point you have questions to pop them in the chat. Um, Kevin wrote in, variation stores your widget settings. Also wiring, very important. Yeah, absolutely, Kevin. Uh, super duper important to grasp. So I'm gonna pop over to my wiring view temporarily and uh, just running those wires so you guys can hear what we're doing. So I'm gonna open this organ up. So this is a native instruments organ. And if I pop over here to the organ itself, you'll see that it gives us lots of different potential things to control. Um, so I am going to go ahead and map these vibrato buttons. And the way that I'm gonna do that is by using a button. So if I pop over to the edit view and scroll down here, you'll see we have some buttons. Now you can also filter things. So if you wanna see just the buttons, you can do that. But I'm gonna go ahead and put a button in here, just like this. And I'm gonna choose contact organ. And in this case, I'm actually gonna go in and assign this by clicking. So you see both at the same time. When I click this button, um, you'll see that this is now mapped. So I'm gonna go down here and uncheck this learn parameter button, exit edit mode, and now you'll see when I click this button, that parameter will toggle. Now perhaps you wanna control a different parameter at the same time. Uh, maybe you wanna control uh, your draw bars. You can absolutely do that, but um, Gig Performer kinda goes a step further with this one, which is a really nice feature. I don't know if this is, um, a well-known feature, but it's certainly a useful one. So if you see down here, we've got three uh, different types of draw bars. So you could, in theory, go back through and manually put these in in the right order, which would be a bit time consuming. However, if I drag in one and hit the number nine and let go, Geek Performer is going to automatically bring them in in the right color and in the right order. Um, so this was really, really well thought out. Um, actually blew me away when I first figured out that this was a thing you can do. So we're going to go back through here uh, and map these to organ. Now, right now, there's no way to do these all at once. And I don't want to um, be able to uh, control all of these. So um, I am going to just click on one and go down here. We'll choose organ. And I'm going to learn this parameter. And all I'm going to do is move this draw bar. I'm going to exit this. And now these are linked. 
So the setting for this draw bar will be saved. Um, so uh, we've got that going on here. Now, perhaps at the same time I control this particular uh, draw bar, I want to control the volume because perhaps in altering the sound, your volume has become too loud. So I'm going to go ahead and start by putting a gain and balance knob here. Um, and I'm going to put it right here. Yep. Just run this through manually. Got some fantastic chatter going on here. Um, is there a widget to control the world? Um, I'm not 100% sure. However, what I can tell you is that before Piano Paul's episode of Gig Performer, we did try and figure out if there was a way he could control my computer using OSC from Germany. So perhaps anything is possible with a little bit of coding um, and the famous 11 knob. All right, let's pop back over here. Uh, we're going to enter our edit mode, and I'm going to bring in, why not the 11? Boom. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and map this to gain and balance and to the gain. Um, and that's it. Now we are set up. But I guess that's probably not the best place for it because it seems like you can't see that very well. We'll put it over here. Now, I can map this to uh, my controllers manually. But we also have this cool thing available called widget groups. So um, if I come over here, so I'm remembering the name. So it's underneath general. And I'm going to add this widget group to widget group A and this widget group also to widget group A. And what I am telling um, the widgets in this particular case is, hey, whatever one does, the other should also do. So I'm going to map this one to a knob, go into MIDI, learn. And now you're going to see they move together. Now, perhaps this is also not sufficient because um, uh, you maybe don't want your volume to go all the way down and all the way up. So you can indeed set values for your widget. And Gig Performer makes this pretty easy to do. So I'm going to exit edit mode. Let's just say this is the lowest value that I want. If I shift click, I can say set as minimum value. Then I can go here. And perhaps I want to set this, shift click, as maximum value. Now check out what happens here. So the volume is only being scaled in the range that I set. And the draw bar is actually being adjusted all the way through. Um, so we can actually scale things um, using our controllers just like that, um, which is kind of fun and kind of powerful and a, a really cool thing to be able to do. Um, Ed wrote in and is asking if I can cover this, which definitely would be a bit off topic today. However, um, perhaps we can get uh, somebody to come in who's really good at scripting to cover that. Um, I'll definitely add that to my list of things. So um, I do actually want to talk about scripting just a little bit because um, there's a particular thing that people often ask is, how do I control multiple parameters um, with one knob? Now, I will say something that you can do in Gig Performer now is have multiple parameters being controlled with one knob by just hiding one. So in our general tab, there's this little widget here, right? And if I choose hide, it's not a widget, it's a button. But if I click hide, when I leave edit mode, it's gone. So now it's controlling two parameters and you don't see the other one. So that is one option. Um, but it turns out that using a tiny bit of GP script, you're actually able to code things um, that will allow you to truly control multiple parameters with one knob. Now, if you are in the back right now going, Brett, I am not a GP script person. I'm not a script person. I don't know how to do this. Um, I want to encourage you just a little bit because um, I also am not a scripting person. And GP script is written in such a way that with a little bit of effort up front, um, you can kind of script anything. Now, do you need to script in order to make use of Gig Performer? 
Absolutely not. As a matter of fact, there's no real reason to use scripting until the moment that there is a reason to use scripting. Um, so if you are brand new to Gig Performer and you're looking at this, just go back to the first 30 minutes because it's going to show you how to plug in your controller. It's going to show you how to switch sounds using your controller, using program change messages, using the global MIDI. And it's going to show you how to assign widgets to parameters in a VST as well as how to map them to a hardware controller. This one is a little bit more interesting. So what I've got going on here is I have got a mini V3 pulled up and I'm gonna do my best here to resize this. Fantastic. So this is real, I love this VST. Um, that's just the, the thing that it comes with when I open it up. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna control both the filter as well as the volume using a very simple GP script. So at the very top here, if I go to window, I'm going to click show current Rackspace script editor. And when you do that, you will see a window that looks like this. And you can put in here whatever you want. But as it turns out, um, Gig Performer gives you some good starting places. Um, and I will tell you that I don't really... Um, no scripting that well. So Gig Performer allows you to come in here and choose a bunch of templates that you might want to get started with. But before we do that, let's think about what our goal is. We want a single widget to control multiple parameters. So we're going to start by adding a single widget. You can choose any widget that you want, but in order to make use of it inside Gig Performer, you have to give it a name. Now, this is only applicable if you're using GP script. So I'm going to call this knob one. Um, it's a very creative name, but it's just going to say to Gig Performer, hey, this knob has a name. This is what it is. And so when you reference it in the script, uh, you have something to call this particular knob. Now, we also need to control this mini V3 from our script. So we have to also give this a name. So if you write mouse click, you're going to see um, OSC GP script handle. So I'm going to click set handle. And I'm going to also give this a creative name. I'm going to call it mini V3. And I'm going to check use in GP script. So now I've given names to these particular parameters. And when I come into my script editor, I just want to say, hey, these are the things that I'm using. Now, I could do that um, by typing, or I could right mouse click and choose auto declare blocks and widgets. Now, what you're going to see here is, hey, I have a plugin block that I've titled mini v3 and a widget that I have titled knob one. Um, so, Gig Performer knows that they are there. Now, what I want to happen is I want Gig Performer to do something when I move a widget. So rather than consulting the manual, which you should do, the manual is amazing, I'm going to choose a, a template. And I'm going to choose a callback of single widget value change. Now, a callback is fancy wording for when this happens, do this. So R, in this case, when this happens, is when the value of a widget is changed. Do this. So it says, on widget value changed, new value double. And this is just an explicit declaration saying, hey, the widget value that you're going to see is somewhere between 0 and 1. And the name of it is new value. Now we have to tell it which widget, which widget, that's a tough one, to be looking at. So I'm going to say, hey, check out knob one. Because that is what we declared up here, right? Now here are local variable declarations. We're going to come back to this in a minute. But right now, we want to get it set up so that we are able um, to control any parameter, let alone two parameters. So how do we do this? inside of 
your plugin device, they're sort of like a number assigned to everything. So this is the filter. And when I move it at the top left, you can see parameter 23 pop up here. So everything that I move has a number that Gig Performer is recognizing. So when I pop back over to my scripting window here, I know that I need to access this parameter number 23. So I'm going to hit Command Shift Spacebar and start typing set parameter. Now, how would you know this if you didn't know it? Well, you just might not, but now you do because I'm sharing it with you. So this is something you can very easily do at home. You're going to see that set parameter has three different things that need to be entered in. And I don't know this by memory, but Gig Performer is telling me, you need to tell me which block, right? Which number, what parameter, and what value. So the block that we're going to use is the uh, mini V3. I'm going to type that in. Now I'm going to tab over to the next thing. And this index number, right, is going to be an integer. And we know what it is because our plugin window told us it was number 23. So I'm going to type that in. Now, this last one is asking you, what value should I adjust that to? And we're going to adjust it to new value. And that is actually not arbitrary. It comes from up here. OK, I'm going to get rid of this for now. I'm going to hit compile. And now we're going to test it. We're going to see if this non-coder was able to code that widget to move. So I'm going to make this a bit bigger so you can see it. We'll do 70%. So you can see this cutoff frequency when this knob is moved is being moved. Now, those of you who know about cutoff frequency, it can actually really affect... <laughs> So perhaps I want to be able to control the volume from the same widget. Can I do it? Absolutely, I can. Well, the volume here is actually parameter zero. So all we have to do is go back to our window and add one more line. So it is exactly the same thing. So I'm going to copy and paste it, except that it's no longer 23. It's zero. I'm going to choose compile. We see that that is indeed OK. I'm going to open my mini v3 again. And now, when I move this knob, you're going to see both of these are moving together. Now, this is somewhat problematic, right? Because I don't want my volume to increase when my filter is opening, because that's backwards from what I want. So can I create a way in which I can have my knobs move backwards from each other inside of Gig Performer. Um, and the answer is yes, absolutely I can. So let's open up our window again. So what we're really wanting is kind of the opposite thing to happen on our, um, our volume parameter. So new value, which is what it's setting to, is the same. So how do we get the opposite. Well, the opposite is really just subtracting one, right? So just to kind of think about that a little bit more, like if my value is between zero and one, let's say my value is 0.5, then I want the opposite value to be 0.5. So if I just make this a subtraction here, I'm going to get two different directions at the same point because my value is now being inverted, basically. So you can see as I move this, I guess you can't really see. I should make this bigger. 90%. So you can see now, hopefully, that my, my uh, knobs here are moving in opposite directions. Um, so we're almost there. But there is still one other problem. And the problem is that I don't want my volume to go all the way down to zero. Because then I couldn't hear my very loud plugin that has a wide open filter. So how do we deal with this? This is where um, using some local variables can come in handy. So Gig Performer has a way to scale numbers. Um, and of course it does because um, you can scale them inside of Gig Performer without using scripting. So I'm going to go over here and type var. 
And I'm going to set some variables that I want to be able to use in my script. And variables are basically just things with a name. So to make my life a little bit easier, instead of using one minus new value, I'm going to give one minus new value a name. And then I'm going to use that name. So let's come up with something super creative again. I'm going to call this scaled value. I'll call it inverted value. How about that? Inverted value. And my inverted value is going to be somewhere in between 0 and 1. And I need to tell Gig Performer that so it knows. So I'm going to say double. And that means somewhere between 0 and 1. And I'm going to set it to be equal to 1 minus new value, which I think I didn't quite copy correctly. But we'll find out when I paste it. Yeah. OK. So compile. There we go. So now. If I've done this correctly, inverted value can replace this, and I'll get the same result. So let's test it. Oops. Inverted value. OK. So we'll open up our plugin again. I'll pop over here, and let's see. So we've got the same result here but it's just doing it slightly different. So now what I want is I want a way to say, hey, I don't actually want it to go all the way from zero to one. I want it to be um, scaled. I want it to go from, let's say, 50% to 75%. Can we do it? We absolutely can do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to add another variable. And in this case, it is going to be called scaled. And it's it's kind of just good to like label things so you know what they mean, I think anyway, especially if you're kind of, um, you know, new to the coding thing. So I've written in here scaled colon double equals. And now I need to tell Gig Performer what this is. So Gig Performer has a function called scale range. I don't even know if that's the right word, but I'm going to start typing in scale. And you'll see here, it gives you all of these options. I'm going to choose scale range. And it's going to tell me everything that I need in order to use this. So the first is this double situation here. Um, and there's just in X. And what I'm going to put in there is what I'm kind of pooling from. Like, where am I starting at? So I'm going to say I want to start at my invert value. right? So this is my starting number. And these are where I'm going to scale them. So I'm going to say that I want to uh, scale my invert value from 50 to 75. And I am going to compile this. Identifier not declared invert value. This is kind of a nice feature too. So I chose inverted value, which is why it didn't work. OK, so now this is a thing. It worked. So I want to test and see, like, did this do what I thought it would do? And the easiest way to do that is to say print scaled. Okay. Now, Gig Performer has this thing called a script logger, which I'm going to open up here. And we want to see what scaled is sending out. So when I move this, my script logger disappears. And I go to 0, is it showing me 75? It is. And when I go all the way up, is it showing me 50? It is. So it worked. So now all we have to do is send this to the right place. So I want this scaled thing um, to be what gets set um, for my volume parameter. Now, there's a bit of a problem with this, which is that volume uh, goes uh, from 0 to 1. Uh, goes from 0 to 1, rather. No, it, it, sorry. Woof, getting backwards. The issue is that volume takes an integer. So we need to make sure that this value becomes an integer. So I'm going to just type scaled here. But when I do this, um, it says that it's going to work, but it's not going to work. So I'm going to divide this by 100 so that I get a number between 0 and 1. 
I'm going to close this because I know that this is going to work. And when I move this, you'll see that my filter frequency covers the range of 100, but my volume does not. And so this is one way you can use scripting um, to make it possible to control um, these parameters at the same time. And now if I were to map this to a knob, open my mini V3. I guess you can't see that. Let me move my hand out of the way. Okay. So now when I move that knob, you'll see I can control those two parameters scaled using uh, GP script, uh, which is kind of just a nice thing to be able to do. So um, this is how you use Gig Performer. These are like the foundational concepts. I know there is a, a bit of an added bonus there, um, a little bit of GP script going on. Um, for users who have been around a bit longer and might have a use case for this. Um, but again, I'm not a coder. Um, I don't understand a ton about coding, but all of the things in GP script are actually quite accessible. So if you're into it and you want to give it a shot, you can certainly follow along uh, with this video and do it yourself. Um, all of the other parameters are foundational concepts. And I have to tell you, if you master building rack spaces and using variations and changing between them, Gig Performer is going to make it much easier for you to perform live. Now, if you need further evidence of this statement, go check out our Gig Performer in Action thread, which documents a hundred different use cases for Gig Performer and why people are choosing it many times is included and even where they came from. So we are about to wrap up for today. So if you have... Um, any questions, make sure you get them in there before we wrap up. But I want to remind you next week, we have special guest Marty Wade coming on. And he's going to talk about reading audiences and how he uses Gig Performer to quickly change to the sounds he needs for a song, even when he doesn't know which song he's going to be playing next, which I think is a really interesting performance um, technique. And yeah. Um, so thank you guys so much for being here. We'll have Marty Wade back with us next week. Um, and I will see you next Thursday at the same time, 1130 Eastern Standard.